think I am. Oh, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, oh, my camera seems a little high again. Whoa! If that does not fix it, then I'll change the pan later. Whatever. Let's start the trial. I'm super tired right now. I wasn't going to stream. But then I got really stressed out. Whoa! I got really stressed out. So I'm just like, I need to take my mind off of stuff. So let's play video games. Okay, I do have to. Just a There we go. Ugh. <sighs> This is it then, Mr. Nadohodo. Yes, it's time to put an end to this now. The miserable curse that has been plaguing Mr. Natsu. Do everything. My eye is twitching again because I'm stressed. No, just stop thinking about it. Uh... In my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Mrs. Sato. Suffering Soseki selfishly sidelined. <coughs> Ah. Good morning to you too, Mr. Natsume. Good morning. Good morning, locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Listen to you two, chatting away happily as if the main player of today's trial isn't here. Why would you do that? Why? Oh dear, you didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps that because you had your eyes shut so tightly, you were meditating, finding inner calm. I need to find inner calm. It seemed wrong to disturb you. I was waiting! What's the matter, Mr. Natsume? You seem different somehow today. Why, naturally, that's because I've attained spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature, you see, is a journey to discover one's own death. <laughs> or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I missed the signs, I'm afraid. Come now. You'll have to forgive me. You mustn't talk of your path leading you to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example. Oh, yes, there it is. Inner calm. You, you barely came to see me at all yesterday. I, I was sure you'd abandon me and return to our beautiful long-lost homeland. You've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yes, well, anyway. I intend to set everything straight in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. Wow, I'm so freaking stressed that I'm even getting dizzy. Wow, I need to chill. Happy thoughts. Breathing. Don't be stressed. What the heck? <sighs> Actually reached an important decision myself. Oh, what sort of decision? She'll fill you in after the trial. Right? He's gonna go back to Japan. It would seem. Mr. Scholz isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think. He's overslept again. The great detective, my arch nemesis. Long may he stay away, if you ask me. Defendant and your legal representative. The trial's about to begin. Make your way into the courtroom immediately. That is not a British accent, but whatever. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. And when the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Soseki-san's curse. The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client and keep fighting to the very end, that's all. I'm so curious as to what Shamspear's real deal is. I mean, he's definitely after um, the treasure that the dude left behind. The key, Olive has it somehow. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. 
Very good. And now I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Chosen by lot to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done. You mock my words. I feel obliged to say, I feel especially ruthless on days when my heart is sitting just right. Oh, well I wonder if you could just, uh, you could adjust my hat for me. And please, be as ruthless as you like. Thieves deserve to die, if you ask me. Especially gas thieves. I have no sympathy for the man at all. Look, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again now. I don't have time for this. I've got my own problems. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here. The leaders flock to a righteous verdict again today. Now, Lord Van Zeeks, what can you tell us? The prosecution's report, please, for the courts. In relation to the theory expanded by the defense yesterday regarding the defendant's tea. There is no poison! But he does have the results. Take your sweet time, please. Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the blackguard in the dock. Pray, allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine hue. In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found a bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the store. There was indeed a frozen reddish liquid in a little depression on top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That <laughs> that's the tea, sis. That's what Mr. Natsume brought with him that night. Whoa, did my... Damn it. My controller died. <sighs> Gotta use my Joy-Cons. Rack. Well, the brains at the yard analyzed it, and yes, you're right, it was tea. There wasn't a trace of strychnine or any other toxic substance in it. So... So, Natsume is innocent. In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. It's in the clear. What a revelation! Trial done. Trial over. As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is blameless here. My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Nipponese reaction. The uh, F? What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found in the few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. But, what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the Thames and conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? What does that have to do with anything? A word, the water in the ocean is extremely salty, Council. Exactly. Unfit for drinking. Just as the victim's tea was on the night in question, as the court has already heard. But there's no poison, so what makes it undrink- What? Bitter was the precise word from the lips of Mr. William Shamspear. Whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. But what? His, his argument makes no sense! There's no poison in the tea! There's no poison found anywhere! So what the frick? Then Natsume didn't do it, you crazy f Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's request. Shamspear. Yes, it sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friends. Bailiff, show Mr. Shamspear to the stand. Punch his stupid face. Mr. William Shamspear, the victim of this despicable crime. Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember? Or sooth, was I, Shamspear, that have a belly full of the foul fluid given in mine innocence? Yes, but as was revealed yesterday in, in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we have perhaps first been led to believe. By using bars of soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company, yes. 
one may smile and smile and be a villain. Forsooth, was I, Shamspear, did have a room full of the sweet fuel given. That's right, fellow jurors, don't forget, this man is a rotten thief. I haven't forgotten, kept all that about the ice coins a tiny secret, didn't you? You should have owned up sooner. Arrest him, I say. Arrest him at once. Let him feel the sting in my tail. Oh, indeed. By dint of vile and cowardly means, have I plotted to further mine own ends, I confess. Thou wouldst not pardon my sins. Of that, I am sure. You acknowledge your wrongdoing. What exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their death. And for a coward such as I, death be well deserved. But, would it that a still greater crime passeth unpunished? For lo, the hairy-faced gentleman of the Father East in Verona did contrive to poison me. No, he didn't. But there was no poison in the tea fan in your room. The police have attested to that. What the defense would assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared up by the witness's testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamspear? Very, my liege. I would most gladly speak. What are you trying to say? Very well, let the witness testify to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why is it that poison apparently entered your body. The known was found in the tea. The tea inconsistency. Ha ha ha. A Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. It was in my cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. Whilst feigning distraction and a debate, ne'er did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. He drank it all? Immediately? When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Thus, this no thus tis no surprise that poison not being not found in the tea I did pour in the moulds of soap. Natsume drank all of his. The poison was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. Whoops. The normal way for poison to be administered, in my experience. Oh, so you've poisoned people before then, huh? I don't trust him at all. Right, otherwise it would be disastrous if the poisoner were to mix the cups, for instance. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nipponese took the bottle back to his own room. The absence of a vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. Ugh, knew that. By now it should be perfect, perfectly clear. A bar or two of cheap soap is wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused's hands. Ah. Sirs, madams, it's true that I, Shamspear, be a common thief of gas. But, but, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Something's up with you. I mean, I already know you're shady, but... Wherefore would I lie? Verily, I have no cause. I have not to lose. Well? I do declare. Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Okay, I don't think I have to press everything because... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My cup alone. Ne'er did he drop. I'm gonna press this. But the teacup Mr. Natsuma drank from was found completely empty at the scene. And let's not forget the defendant's maxim. Drink tea while it's hot. I did gulp from the poisoned cup that night, and in mine agony did I writhe uncontrolled. In fits of pain I did knock the fellow's cup and its contents spilled as blood from a gaping wound, methinks. Though no, certainly, twas after I made the coins of ice from his tea. An upset cup was found on the table that the victim was slumped over. There is no contradiction here. It's true, there was no tea it left in either cup that we found at the scene. But still, something about this statement is troubling me. Yes, of course, I know what it is. It's Mr. Natsume's wise drink the tea while it's hot, Maxim, isn't it? 
not sure that's it. Thank you, witness. Now reiterate for the call what it is that occupied you after your guest had left before you drank your tea. Wait a minute. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. So he's saying that he... He's saying that Natsume poisoned Shamspear's cup. And Shamspear used the tea from Natsume's cup to make the the frozen coins. That's why there's no poison in there. But in his own cup, there was... Poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the mold of soap. Don't I have evidence? Don't I have the teacups? There's no tea ring. Um, okay. Okay, so I think I'm gonna try presenting it on this statement. There's no... Yeah, I'm right. You claim that Mr. Natsume didn't drink a drop of tea on the night in question. But that's impossible. How, 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 Trump logic? What is this, ye dark, ye dark e clad fiend? Is that how it's supposed to be? Dark e clad? Or is the space in the wrong, wrong part of the letter? That's weird. Or is it supposed to be darkly? Whatever. The two teacups from the scene. Uh, one used by the victim and the other by the defendant. Have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertible proof. Is that a tiny mouse on his shoulder? Do you? Oh man, can, I don't. You can't see my cursor, but there's a tiny mouse on his shoulder. Oh my gosh, that's so freaking cute. Incontrovertible. What difference? Look at the inside of the cups. Just here, there's a clearly visible ring. Yes, a tea ring. Commonplace enough. Indeed, such stains occur all too readily when one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsume's cup has no such ring. Good lord, you're right, it's completely clean. And pretty, sir, what makest thou of it? Exactly what Mr. Natsume told the court yesterday, the Japanese saying he quoted. Drink. Tea. While it's hot. That's right, yes. The jittery Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night and drank his tea in no time. Ha! <laughs> Stupid face. Uh. If, as you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea, a ring would have developed on the inside of his cup as well after several hours of tea was left standing. What? Um... In short, Mr. Shamspear. You clearly lied to the court. It the to a nunnery. Yeah, break that cup. Do it. Throw it in the fire. As a rule, I fill my hollowed chalice up to seven times during any one trial. Might want to keep that information to yourself. <gasps> Look, it's a tiny mouse again. Is that supposed to be like a tiny Kazuma? On his shoulder? That's so freaking cute. Wait, but Iris doesn't know Kazuma, so... It's on occasion, tedium distracts me and I pour more times than I intended until the bottle is dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. William Shakespeare. Yes, my liege? Though you previously stated that you made the coins of ice from the leftover tea in the accused's cup. Could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? Eh? Could it be that, yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot left at the scene? There was no teapot left at the scene, he took it! A fact that has vanished from your memory until now. Okay, this can't be legal. Now he's tr just trying to be like, Oh, hey, remember you said that? And that's not... No, there's no teacup. Faith, my liege, thou art a magician. No, there's no teacup. Where's the picture? Batman. 
There's no teapot. Oh, there is a teapot on the stove. For oh, verily, tis as thou doubt hast seen with thine own eyes that night. What? Forsooth, I was mistook. I did plan to use tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but lo, when I looked, it was empty. And thus did I use the dregs that festered in the teapot, as my liege did suggest. And you've just suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before? Are we supposed to believe that? You shut your face. You're trying to... I am going to smack him. People's memories are imperfect, my learned friend, which is why we rely on evidence instead. And the evidence showed there's no poison in the tea. Like, oh my gosh, this, this is stupid. But in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. Why is it in the teacup? And secondly, that the spoiled cup was not the source of the insipid ice coins that have bewitched this court. Hmm. Prosecution makes a fine summary of the fact. No! The, you don't have any evidence for that! All of this is freaking conjecture! He's always like, oh, you're... You're just- you need to prove it with evidence of what- like, why should we believe what you say? It's all just hearsay. That's exactly what he's doing now and he's telling us to listen to him? No, this is stupid. Oh my gosh. Furthermore, that testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words... Burn your cape. The inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. No. What does this mean then? The tea declared it means there's no issue with the gas thief's testimony. No, there is! He's lying! Apart from a bit about thieving gas, obviously. My lords, ladies, and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear. After I did dine at Grub's Grubbery Alehouse that night, not that passed my lips, but the black tea given me by the Japanese was but be stooped as low as death. He had enough money to go to a, an alehouse? And on what did you dine, sir? Why, I did partake of my favorites. A broth as would be called soup, and a leaf as would be called salad. As insalubrious as the menu as establishment where it was served. But you gods will give us some faults to make us men. Willingly would I suffer what punishment to seem fit to serve a wicked thief of gas, but... I pray you wise and noble fellows, ne'er forget the simple truth. That be one thing, and this be another. No, he's clearly hiding something. Jurors all, your humble servant Shamspear doth entreat you. Punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. My lord. If I may speak, my lord. Yes, Mr. Foreman. I believe we have been duped by that rotten defense light. No, oh, now I have to do another summation examination. By me. I do declare you may be right. We all know the waif there was making coins of ice to keep himself warm. This loyal lad says he's stealing gas. He deserves a dose of poison, eh? He's been leading us up the garden path. That's not what we're saying! We're saying not to... Wait, their, their argument makes no sense too, because they're like, oh, he deserves poison. But Natsume didn't poison him. What? 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 I really never said anything like that. But what we just heard from the victim there has opened our eyes again. We've reached the decision this time, and we won't be swayed. I was excited to find out what the whole deal with Shamspear was, but this trial is so freaking ridiculous right now. The court acknowledges the position of the jury foreman, and will duly hear the jury's findings. What? No! You can't yet! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decision now. Yuzai! 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 
有罪有罪有罪グッドナークグッドナーベンドアレックスヴィヴィゲイツいやヴィゲイツ I'm here! Alright, good timing. Hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday, guys. This trial sucks so far. You messed up? I'll answer that with a yes. <laughs> I asked them, how are you? B Gates. Uh, I hereby declare the jury to be in one accord. Eh, happy day! I am going to smash both your faces in with a baseball bat. How is this happening? My lord, the defense asserts his right to carry out a summation examination. But it will, the court upholds the defense's right. Shut up, Spanzies! Shut up! Typical. My learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. When it turns out that the poison is not in the tea, not related to anything in the tea, and you are clearly wrong, Van Zeeks. Let's see what happens then. Oh my gosh. I load stream and everyone's on like guilty. <laughs> no, we're we're not done yet. We're not done. This trial will therefore enter its second summation examination immediately. Jurors, the court calls upon each of you. State the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime of which he is charged. Oh, excuse me. Oh my gosh. They're all just gonna say, Oh, because he's a shady Japanese man. A man of logic, me, and having considered all the evidence, the defendant must be logically guilty. What evidence? I... The evidence is there's no poison in the tea. We did not examine the teacups for poison. So you can't just be like, Oh, everything's solvent. Like, you got your faces. I do agree that gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid pain. So... So him being a gas thief makes him innocent? What? The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal, gases. <laughs> oh my gosh, what are they all talking about? The, the argument is... That... That the tea... Pot was poisoned. Or no, the argument is that the that only Shamspear's tea is poisoned. So Natsuma's teacup and the tea in the pot wasn't poisoned. Why the hell are they talking about gas? I swear there's so much run around in these games, that's why I stopped playing these games. I mean I mean yesterday's investigation and the trial before seemed to make sense. Well, actually, this whole trial doesn't make sense because we went from... Hey. Here's Natsume. He supposedly poisoned his uh, his um, housemate. And now the housemate's saying like, Oh, no, he poisoned me. But then we we showed him to be a gas thief. What does the, any of this have to do with anything? Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Again, what does this have to do with Natsume? Truth be told, the tea my wife serves up for me is a little sketchy at times. If nothing else passed the victim's lips that night, no other explanation is there. He ate food! I do feel that perhaps personal opinion about gas and its supply has influenced decisions somewhat. But never mind. If if they all have negative views of gas and of Shamspear, then they wouldn't say that Natsume is guilty. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter-argument wasn't as unassailable as we'd hoped. And Mr. Shamspear was poisoned. There can be no doubt of that. I have gas, does that count? <laughs> I have gas too, does that mean I killed... Uh, I poisoned him? I don't understand. Then how are we supposed to turn this around? I think we need to establish the method by which Mr. Shamsu was actually poisoned. Our only hope is to demonstrate that to the court incontrovertibly. Incontrovertibly. But that's almost impossible at this stage. If we don't manage it though, Mr. Natsume will 
will be found guilty. No delays, Council. Proceed with the summation examination. Everyone has a negative view of gas. It's smelly and clears the room. Silent but deadly. Ha ha ha! Oh, you get a clearer view of the mouse! That's so cute! It's so adorable. It's a tiny, you know, skin mouse. What evidence? All the evidence, you say? That's right. There's no room for doubt. It's all pointing at that Japanese man with the big mustache. It says the Englishman with the bigger mustache. Which means we need to show the man some new evidence to make him change his mind. If only we had that kind of evidence. Don't worry. This summation examination has barely started, really. Perhaps there'll be a shift in the situation that shows an existing piece of evidence in a new light. Let's hope so. To start with, though, I need to find some way out of this deadlock. He just sneezes and the mouse goes flying. No, the mouse is so cute! Keep the mouse! Mata! This isn't the time or place to be discussing the price of gas, madam. But really, think of the injustice. Air is a gas and air is free. Why should Ultimate gas cost money? It, it makes my blood boil. I can feel myself becoming more ruthless than ever. This isn't the time or place to be ruthless either. If I might interject here. Ah, yes, madam. It seems my fellow Joe takes issue with the price of our company he charges for gas. But it's precisely because of thieves like this man that the cost goes up. Oh, what a beastly man. That unkempt mustache, those hunched shoulders, poisoning tea and stealing gas. She thinks Sham Spear isn't stealing gas, she thinks Natsuma is stealing gas. Oh my gosh. No, no, wait, that juror too has a point. He does have a point. <laughs> Actually, unforgivable. No, 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 Mr. Natsuma isn't the one who's been stealing gas. I'll thank you not to go adding on more crimes. Mr. Natsuma hasn't been poisoning tea either. Well, anyway, I've quite made up my mind. It's all made up as a price of gas. I don't like that lady. I'm just those, whatever. Can we please talk about the poison rather than gas, do you think, sir? Well, if you like. I mean, to be honest, I take poison over gas every time. You take poison? What I mean is, the poison can only poison you. It doesn't explode, does it? Goodness me, what are you talking about? Set them straight, please, lawyer man. Well, it's certainly true that poison isn't prone to exploding. But I think you'll find poison also can't light or heat um, heat up a room. We breathe air for free and we get charged up the air for gas. Actually, my gas isn't that expensive. But that's also probably because I don't really turn on my heater that much. I don't use that much gas. I only use gas for cooking. My gas... Actually, did I get a gas bill recently? No, I haven't. Oh well. Why is everyone a moron? Because it's Ace Attorney. Meh. Ah. You're right. I hadn't considered that at all. Young lawyer man. Um, yes? You have a good head on your shoulders. Did you use someone like you on our company's legal representative? Well, I wasn't expecting to pick up more business in the middle of a trial, that's for sure. Anyway, the point is, I haven't had the best experience with gas companies in the past. That's the kind of free. We have an entire house here in the middle of a Chicago winter. Yeah, then that's gonna be a lot of heating. Um, I guess the opposite thing is that in the summertime, I use a lot of AC because it's California and we get freaking hot. So my electric bill then is a bit higher. I mean, please refrain from all this talk of gas. There's an all out attack underway here, in case you haven't noticed, against my company's gas. And I'm supposed to sit here and take it, am I? I don't think so. He's really buzzing now. All I've heard about our wonderful fuel is explosions and poisoning. What about electricity, hmm? What about getting electrocuted? What about that? A little explosion here and there's nothing in comparison. An explosion? It would hardly be described as nothing, madam. Nevertheless, the theft of your gas is deplorable. 
My point exactly, but the gas thieves aren't even the worst of our enemies. They're far more devious re reprobates to contend with on a daily basis, you know. More devious? Ooh, madam. Other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies? Not quite what I was expecting. We generate gas and we deliver it to our customers fair and square. Indeed. Nobody is questioning that, madam. Altamont is an exemplary gas company. But there are other unscrupulous gas companies here in London that don't even have any gas at all. What? But if they don't have any gas, how do they go about selling it to people? You wouldn't think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, you see, and sell that. They steal your gas? How on earth is such a thing possible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's homes via a network of pipes. But these devious reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert our gas into their own rotten pipes. Then they make a contract with the household supplied by those pipes. And take money for the precious gas that's rightfully ours without us even knowing. They're diverting gas into their own pipes illegally. What a brazen form of theft. We visit customers' houses to collect the money for their meters. From their meters. The government. Oh. We always have to check whether or not one of those devious companies has been up to its tricks. Whoa, what's up? Um. Why are they talking so much about gas? You have something to say about that juror number three? Oh, golly, you mean me? I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I was just thinking to myself. I really did catch him off guard there. Thinking about what the lady next to you was saying, correct? Well, yes. Please, JD, already. No. No more money. No more new games. Kill him. I want to. I just got a little riled about it recently, you see. Go on. An ultimate gas worker visited my house the other day to investigate the pipe work. We need to ask your cooperation while we carry out a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. I let him in, and do you know what he did? I'm um, afraid I have no idea. Please tell us. He proceeded to take one of my lights off the wall. Then he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. Isn't that dangerous? What do you think you're doing, young man? You're giving away company secrets there. Oh please, everybody knows, but it was very nearly the death of me, I can tell you. What do you mean? I'll explain if you don't mind. I'll pay for it. Three weeks of Orny. That's it. If you don't love it, I'll gift you five subs. <laughs> we'll see after I finish Ace Attorney. As I said before, these unscrupulous other gas companies connect their customers to our pipe network. Yes, but how does blowing into the pipes come into it? That mouse is so... I want a little doll of that mouse now. I really need to get back into sewing so I could, like, make plushies and shirts. Is he admitting to a crime right there? No, he's just saying that's what the gas company came in and did. Obviously, there's gas in the pipes, and it's a fairly low pressure. By blowing air through the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporarily. And if you do that, any lights connected to the same pipe will flicker for a moment. Ah, oh, I see. In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe, the lights of an adjacent property that has no contract with your company flicker, you can know that these devious scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. It's the reason why we have teams of workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which lights flicker. The trouble is, the particular worker who came to my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down the pipe with all his might. And you can guess what happened, can't you? Well, if he blew hard, then... Wait, you mean... That's right. The lights didn't just flicker. They went out. Along with the stove. Gas started pouring into the house. What a disaster. The gas supply must have been interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard. But the flames went out. I'm afraid I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all? I, I said. So by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves connected to the same network of... Wait a minute. Where did that mouse come from? It came from this costume that he's wearing. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Do we...
Is that what he was doing? Wait, um, 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 um. How did, how did this guy die? How did this guy die? He died in the room. How did he die? Make me dab. I'm gonna get a mask for your shoulder. I'm gonna make you have to drop him. No! But it's a cute mouse. Wait. Do you remember how he died? Oh, they mentioned it. Because Natsume said he woke up and his stove would be off and it would be cold. So if that's what Shamspear is doing, why would he want to blow the light off, though? He definitely wants to get into Natsuma's room because when he applied to Garadub for the house, he was like, I want this flat. And Garadub's like, no, it's taken. You got to take the first floor or nothing. And so Shamster was like, okay, I'll take the first floor. He took too many up there against the wall. Okay, okay, okay. And then when the gas starts flowing again, it just silently seeps into the room because the light is out. Mr. Narhodo, I think perhaps... Yes, this is almost certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Juror number three, the defense requests that you amend your statement to include that information. Oh, well, if you'd like. I don't mind. Posture check. Ah, oh, frack. What well, I do? That's our company's secret method of... Oh. Like I said, madam, it's widely known already. Very well, juror number three, you will amend your statement accordingly. Yes, my lord. Although I'm not really sure what the point of all this is. Oh, excuse me. Blow too hard into a gas pipe and you extinguish everything in the house and then you're in real trouble. Um, virtual hugs. Thanks for the hugs! Um. Okay. So who do I... This is where I'll send a hug. Um... Do I present the... Sorry, I'm gonna use the walkthrough. Because I know it's gonna be the photo, but I don't know where. Um... Okay. Number three... Pictures number three and six together. Okay. I thought it was gonna be one, but I don't have like evidence yet. I have to build up the evidence, so it's gonna be six. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. I don't, I don't have the mental, um, mental. I don't have the mental power to deal with all this. I like I've already been stressed about something before. <laughs> I just I just need to figure out I just need to get to the bottom of this. Good gracious, to whose statement do you refer, counsel? Juror number six. Did you hear what juror number three just said? Eh, what? Yes, of course. I heard a mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides Mr. Natsu's tea did, in a matter of speaking, pass the victim's lips on the night in question. What? What explanation? I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding the wall light at the scene? To see if there were any traces of poison there? I was curious to see what your floundering would result in this time, but the mouth of a gas pipe? Scotland Yard have enough to do without exploring such irrelevance. Stop playing this game. Very cool sword. Uh, no, it, I'm not stressed about this game. I'm stressed about something, like, about life. And I was just like, I need to clear my mind and get my mind distracted. So I started playing this game. <laughs> What's a piece of work is a man? What are you trying to say, Mr. Shamspear? What speakest thou? Pretty, is it not strange and strange? That is what I say to thee, sir. You're strange. Might have been quite clear, but let me put it another way. The striking could have been on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. 
Good, good lord. Objection. Are they tasty then, gas pipes? Is that what he's saying? Was the gentleman suggesting that the poor man was so desperately hungry he tried to fill his belly with gas? What the F is he doing? He does that weird dance. I don't know why. Perhaps no actress would perform a kiss scene with him. Hmm? Oh shame, madam, speaking thy fancy. I assure you, I'm not such a buffoon that I have to kiss pipes. There he goes. This is no summation examination. This is a farce. The prosecution will not stand for any more of my learned Nipponese friend's conjecture. To begin with, the lamp in the victim's room is high on the wall. In order to have placed his lips to the pipe that feeds it, he would have to be a contortionist. These are empty assertions. Wow, fill the cup just to throw it again. There's no possible proof that the man did as you say. Get ready to have your mind blown, dude. It's true, I have no proof that Mr. Shamsipper put his lips to the pipe. However, I can say with some certainty that on multiple occasions, Mr. Shamsbury has been doing something in front of the lamp and on his wall. And I have evidence to prove it. Alright, you've got our attention, lad. I'd like to see how you can be so sure of yourself. So would I. Let's see this evidence, then. Now that I've got the jury's ear, I need to make this opportunity count. This is the proof that, time and time again, Mr. Shamsbury stood in front of his gas lamp. And prints on the wall. What the? These are... Wait, what are they called? Yes, skin prints that were found at the scene. Skin prints, counsel? I've never heard of such things. The Justice Ministry is currently assessing whether or not to permit fingerprints as evidence in court, however. My lord, this is an exciting new forensic technique developed by the great detective Mr. Herlock Sholmes. It reveals all the places that Mr. Shamsbury touched in his room. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, that's black magic, isn't it? Hmm, well, if anyone could invent something like this. That great Sholmes fellow, that's for sure. It's that great Sholmes, whatever. I agree, this month's edition of Engineering Thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skin prints in many places that you would expect. On the table, on the costumes. However, Mr. Shamsbury also appears to have been touching some very unexpected places in this room. For example, here. Around the, just around the hanging picture there. Indeed, multiple handprints appear to be visible. Well, I wonder, could he have been appre appreciating the artwork, perhaps? At first, my colleagues and I thought the same. However, imagine standing with your hands where the prints are, and you would find yourself directly in front of... In front of? Ah! I don't believe it. The gas lamp. Though the reason why isn't immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shamspear has regularly been standing with his hands to the wall in front of that lamp. Right, what have you been up to, you not? I'd asked the court to recall juror number four's earlier statement. Me? What did I say? He said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now, if you'll recall juror number three's statement... What? Well, me now? When the gas worker who visited his home blew with too much force into the pipe, it caused all the lights and the gas stove to go out, and gas started to leak into the rooms. Obviously, that incident was an accident. However, the simple fact is... If Mr. Shamsbury were to have blown hard into the gas pipe here in his room, he could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Raggy! Uh, are you suggesting that the man purposefully caused the gas to... I'm gonna say now. Oh, this is mere conjecture! <laughs> Whilst I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during an exclamation examination, you weren't silent before. I must toast my learned friend's utter disregard for the letter of the law. What are you talking about? What is the meaning of this, Lord Van Zeeks? This curious photograph, or whatever it is, presented by the defense, the so called skin prints. 
Clearly, that cannot be accepted as any form of usable evidence in this case. But, but it's an exciting new forensic technique, developed by a great detective. It's nothing. A mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Ugh. Hmm. Certainly, even research of this nature by esteemed Mr. Sholmes cannot be recognized by the court as formal evidence. But... Please, my lord, if I may. Yo-yo, sorry, I'm late. It's okay, Smooth. Happy Thursday. I was cutting onions and cabbage. Ooh, you gonna make, like, a soup or... A stew or a salad? Miss Susato. Not the defense's intention to submit the skin prints as formal evidence. We merely wish to present the results of the great detective's investigation of the scene. As a tool by which you to explain a possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Ha, in your face! And if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never learn the truth behind these mysterious handprints that everyone has now seen. I don't believe we can allow that to happen, and I'm sure the jurors would agree. You're right! Whether those strange handprints are a significant clue or not, it's down to us to decide. Juror number three. Ah oh, yes, I do declare the great detective's investigation results sound absolutely fascinating. And I want to hear what that shady apple fellow has to say about those shady handprints. Two more. Two more! What's the matter with you two? That was foolhardy. Well, I did say it, didn't I? And I don't like to break a promise. No, wait! You heard his lordship. It's not fair to get evidence. Steamed and also made baby lima beans. Ooh, lima beans. I don't think I've ever eaten lima beans. Oh, well done, Mr. Nanohoro. If just one more juror changes his or her mind. Mr. Natsuma's trial will have to continue. Thank you, Mr. Sato, but I couldn't have done it without you. Oh no, it was you who identified the clue after all. This is very much your success. Get wrecked, man. Why, Mr. Shamspear? You seem to be losing your composure. It's one more juror, Mr. Nadohoro. You can do it. Very well, continue, counsel. I'm a man of logic and having considered all the evidence, the defendant must be logically guilty. Um... He's done, he's done. Gas doesn't come for free. If she doesn't like... Mm. I guess I just gotta press these guys again? Gotta... What the? All the evidence, you say. That's right. No doubt. Englishman. The defense just demonstrated... Oh! Oh, that was new. Uh, what was it? But the defense just demonstrated another possible explanation for the events on the night in question. What do you make of that? Did you steam the beans? Want to make a jelly? Your love of cooking has sparked. Oh no, I still hate cooking. I'd rather do the cleanup. <laughs> what? Your so-called skin prints? It's an exciting new forensic investigation to me, de developed by the great detective himself. Susata, you're such a simp for Sholmes! <laughs> the numerous handprints on the wall are clearly out of the ordinary. And if Mr. Shamspear had indeed put his mouth to the gas pipe on the night in question. It can't be denied that there's a possibility that's where the poison was. Well, yes, I won't deny that it's playing on my mind. But as the prosecution rightly says, we should pay no heed to unacceptable forms of evidence. And besides... Yes? Even if the fellow had been up to some mischief with the gas pipes dozens of times before, it doesn't mean he got up to the same shenanigans on the night in question, does it? Oh. If you can't make your case better than that, I'm afraid I can't change my stance. Hmm, you do make a very valid point, sir. What? Hmm, that's true. Perhaps I was a little hasty. No, 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 wait. Look, you've got a chance here, haven't you? So it's time to prove your theory. You and your Japanese cohorts can that is Pacist! You're a pickle hater, we can't take anything you say seriously. 
Pickles are gross. I stand by that forever. Pickles are disgusting. I'll only eat pickles if you give me... 10 million dollars. No, put them in the crock pot this morning. Mm. Oh, so you're gonna make a chili? Or something like that? Just leave our nationality out of this, please. Mr. Naruhoro, we can't substantiate our position. I'm afraid the jurors that changed their minds before may very well change them back. What can I do? Is there any more proof I can give here? Can I show that Mr. Shamsbeer really did blow on the gas pipe on the night in question? I don't think we have evidence, but... The only thing that comes to mind is what Soseki said, so Tess. Testimony? I'm gonna check. Yep, testimony. <laughs> I'm cheating! What's lima bean? No, oh. I, I don't know what beans go into a chili. I've only eaten chili, I've never made chili. No, in truth, I don't have any evidence to support my theory. However... There is witness testimony that substantiates it. What's that? Testimony? This is incredible. Who's testimony? Yes, it's all connected. Everything is linked. A person whose testimony revealed details about the gas in the Garadub residence that night. Namely... I'm gonna say Sorsa. I think those was mostly used. Ah, oh, okay. I like black beans and soybeans. Obviously, I'm talking about the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume himself. The defendant? At the very beginning of the proceedings here in court yesterday, Mr. Natsume said the following. Oh, he said it in court? My lodgings, there's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings. Even on that fateful night, it happened. When I returned from Mr. Shamspear's room, I lit my gas stove and lit Clement in a bed, but before long, the stove went out. And somebody tried to kill me! No, I don't, don't convince me to play already. Being difficult, but we'll figure it out. No, don't have the money, don't have the time. Uh. On the night in question, the gas the defender's room went out. So I asked the court, was that a mere coincidence or not? Good golly. So that Shamspear fellow blew air into the gas pipe to make the man's stove go out on purpose. Now hold your horses there. What would he do that for? Mr. Foreman. What the? What is it, man? We cannot allow judgment to be passed whilst this doubt remains. It's true that I don't have conclusive evidence yet. However, you must surely agree. There is more to this case than meets the eye. Ah. Hey, 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 this is a private combo. <laughs> cooking is fun. The only thing I like cooking is mac and cheese, because I love mac and cheese. Fair enough. Like I said at the outset, a man of logic, first and foremost. Hooray! That's four jurors leaning towards not guilty, my lord. We've overturned the decision. Therefore, the defense calls for the trial to continue. As the defense has rightfully indicated, the summation examination has concluded with a majority of jurors altering their decisions. Two jury members now call guilty. Four will now call not guilty. Therefore, the jury's opinion is conflicted and in accordance with the law of this land, I hereby order the continuation of this trial. Mr. William Shamspear. My lord, how can thy humble ser Shamspear serve thee? What say you in response to the various revelations made during the summation examination? To God mend me, I do solemnly swear. I recall aught of either, the lamp or the pipe. But your handprints have made a tidy mess all over the wall there. How do you explain that, eh? I am done with this. The dignity of this great courtroom has been sullied enough already. Then stop coming here! Stop prosecuting when I am in court, you dumb butt! We all meet at a con or something in the future. Jelly has to host and make cupcakes. That's my vote. I don't know how to make cupcakes. <laughs> I mean, if I have a recipe, I'll do it. I can't make it blind. 
Who, me? As I went to some pains to point out already. A print from the self-professed detective's toy has no place in the British court of law. Ah. As such, whether or not this man did indeed stand before the gas lamp with his hands against the wall. Ah, oh, Regal, thanks for the one bit. You're gonna spam me with the rest of my bits until you agree? <laughs> no. Remains at this time unestablished conjecture. You would all do well to remember that. Ah! Or eat pickles with Bill Murray. No, 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 no. Never, ever, ever. But the prosecution must concede that it would be extremely simple to verify. Just order the mouth of the gas pipe feeding that lamp in Mr. Shamespeare's room to be examined. If there are traces of poison there... Why do you object? What appears to be extremely simple is my Nipponese friend's mind. You will recall that in order to check for the presence of poison in the tea, some remnants of tea were required. Yes, and... Therefore, it shouldn't be beyond your wit to imagine that even if poison were to have been spread on the pipe... It would have been complete... It would have completely evaporated by now, making it any analysis impossible. There you go, chat. She agreed. <laughs> ah, I didn't think of that. Why would it evaporate? I guess it would. In any case, counsel, I fail to see what could possibly have motivated the man to do as you describe. Why on earth would this fellow have wanted to blow air into the gas pipe work where he lived? There's only one possibility that I can think of. And that is... He used the leaking gas to commit murder. Alda! Counsel! Precisely whose life do you propose this man was plotting to end? The answer couldn't be simpler. Now we've unraveled the mystery this far. He's planning to kill Soseki. Natsume. Because he lives there. If the gas lamp were to go out, it would be noticed immediately, of course. But a gas stove, on the other hand, could be silently extinguished by the killer without anyone noticing. I live around those pots myself, so I know what it's like. I can tell you, trying to sleep without the stove lid is pretty much suicide. You'd freeze to death in no time. Mr. Garadub, the landlord, has a large fireplace in his part of the residence on the top floor. In other words, it wasn't the landlord, but a fellow lodger whose life Mr. Shamsu was trying to end. Outrageous! I'm talking, of course, about the defendant. Mr. Natsume isn't the villain in this case. He's the victim this man was trying to murder. What if I give you 1k bids, will you then put all money? How much is 1k bids? Isn't that like... $10? Don't do that, man. My room is the tundra... No gas? Oh, my room is pretty chilly too because I don't get any sunlight. So in the summertime, it's nice. In wintertime, it's cold. The accused is actually the aggrieved. Interesting. However, the fundamental facts of the case remain unchanged. Namely... That the accused is the aggressor here. What? How can you still claim that? It's twenty dollars? Oh. Let us indulge your fancies for a moment and assume that there was indeed poison on the mouth of the gas pipe. The question that then arises is who put it there? Who did put it there? The only logical conclusion is that the person responsible was aware of this man's trickery with the gas supply and is intent to kill. Yes, that would indeed seem logical. If the assailant were unaware, how would he or she have known to lace the end of the gas pipe with poison? So now we must ask, how could anyone have known of Mr. Shamspear's murderous designs? Ah, you mean to suggest... Naturally, the sole possible answer to that question couldn't be more obvious. Only the man whose life was being threatened could possibly have known. What? Huh? I mean, I don't know how much it converts to. I don't know what's better, bits or gift subs. Um, well, subs, Twitch takes half the money. So if so, if a sub is five dollars, then Twitch takes two dollar fifty. So in the end, I get two fifty. Bits, I don't know how those work. Early this morning, my mom woke me up checking my temp. She was afraid I would freeze to death. I'm used to cold. Uh, no, nope. 
I need to be warm. I am getting old. I am frail. I need warmth. But yep, that's how that's how subs work. So when people are like, "Oh, I've got like three thousand subs," you think they're making um fifteen hundred? Nope, they're making half that. So if someone has a thousand subs, you think they're making five thousand dollars? They're only making twenty-five. Because Twitch takes half. I mean, like, if people sub in Tier 2 and Tier 1, then they make more, but Twitch still takes, like, a bit of it. What? In other words, the person who put the poison on the gas pipe in what was a clear retaliatory attack. This is conjecture! You have no evidence to back this up! Can only have been the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Ah. Nope, 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 nope. Whatever Mr. William Shamsper may or may not have contrived to do, he was nevertheless the victim of a potentially lethal poison attack. And the only person who could possibly have penetrated that attack is the accused, Mr. Natsume. He never went in his room before this, though, you stupid. And taxes. Um, they don't take taxes out, I think. Um, at the end of the year, if you made over a certain amount of money through subs and whatnot, um, then Twitch gives you a tax form. And then you have to um, file that when you do your taxes. So um, I think then they'll be like, okay, then we're going to take this much out. Yeah. Or, I don't know how it works with bigger streamers, if the tax is already taken out, but since I make, like... I make the bare minimum to get a tax form, but it's so little that they're just like, yeah, we're not taxing this. I think if thing bits is better, right? You have to ignore it. I think... Yeah, I think bits might actually help out, um... Help out creators more, but, you know, subs are a steady like, steady source of income, whereas bits, you know, not a lot of people give out bits, so... Hmm. The defense counsel's theorizing has failed to avert suspicion from the accused. Far from it. You're theorizing now, you stupid fool. In fact, now that a clear motive for the poisoning has been successfully established... No, it hasn't! This is all conjecture! That suspicion is greater than ever. You're just hellbent on, like, ruining Japanese people's lives. Would you not agree, my Nipponese friends? Ah. Uh... No, don't give up. This isn't the end. Shamspear is guilty. Natsume did not poison him. Uh, make enough to get your snacks and drinks. How did he manage to turn that around on me so rapidly? Mr. Nadahodo, you must respond. Otherwise, the members of the jury may very well change their leanings against us again. And this may be our last chance to gain the advantage. What advantage? Well, it would seem that somebody put poison on the gas pipe in Mr. Shamspear's room. We must name that person now and absolve Mr. Natsume of guilt. You mean, name the true culprits? I know it might sound impossible, but if we fail to do that, I have no doubt that Mr. Natsume's fate will be sealed once and for all. As it happens, one possible culprit does come to mind. The evidence, the poison, it's all pointing to a particular person now. The prosecution calls for the jury to consider their leanings again. Shut up. Shut up. Shut your face. I trust you'll make the correct choice this time, Mr. Foreman. Hmm? What? Oh, don't you worry, we know exactly what- There is one other person who I believe could have been involved in all of this. The true culprit of this crime. The, the true culprit? 
turn found only in second-rate novels featuring third-rate great detectives, my Nipponese friend. I'm not your friend. Stop calling me your friend. You clearly hate me. Shut your face. But why not? This farce has gone on for so long already, I see no reason to cut it short before its disappointing climax. But that's all you want to do, you just want to shut me down at every point. Whatever, shut up, shut up, shut up. Thank you. Tell us, my learned Nipponese friend, what is your latest theory? Who is the so-called true culprit of this crime? Gas poisoning! It's, 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 it's her. It's her. <laughs> she had the envelope with, that was torn in Shamsbeer's room. She's the, yep. It's, you haven't even showed any solid proof of the crime yet, Dracula. I know, right? He's just like, oh, you need to show evidence or, or else your theories make no sense. And then I do. But then whenever he's just like, uh, you're wrong, blah, 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 he never has to show any evidence. I'm just like, this isn't fair. This is stupid. Whatever. I will shut him down and ruin him and embarrass him. Grind him into the ground. Even the person responsible for the poison that afflicted Mr. Shamster is, I believe. Miss Olive Green. Miss Olive Green? Miss Olive Green. I do feel as though I've heard that name in the re recent past council, but I don't recall where. Miss Olive Green, the woman from six days ago. The victim in the recent case of the stabbing on Briar Road. An incident for Miss which Mr. Natsume was arrested, I hasten to add. Oh, of course, yes, Miss Green. She was left comatose for some three days, I believe, but I hear she regained consciousness two days ago. And I hardly need remind the court that Mr. Shamspear's poisoning took place three days ago. Given that the woman was lying comatose in a hospital bed at the time, she appears to have a rather fine alibi. True, on the night that the incident occurred, Miss Green was in the hospital, unconscious. Though on the face of it, it would seem that she couldn't possibly be responsible, but still. My colleagues and I visited Miss Green in the hospital yesterday, and we found her to be in possession of a bottle of poison. Good gracious, she had poison! And there is another fact that links Miss Green to this case as well. The defense requests that she be brought to the witness stand in order to explain the details to the courts. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Shamspear. My lord, pray, what is thy beating? Ah, what be thy bidding? Oh, knew she was a horrible po person? He's just mad because he goes home to a house full of empty bottles and broken wine cups. He gets to hang out with a cute girl. Yep, he's he's jealous that I have a girl, and he doesn't. Because he's a loser! That's how she had poison. She didn't get it from the doctor's office. Oh! It was her own poison! Are you acquainted with Miss Green? Eh? N no, never heard of her. Judging by the look on Mr. Shamspear's face, I think perhaps he genuinely doesn't know her. At least, not by name. As the voice of Her Majesty's prosecution here, I adhere to my word. We will see my learned Nibonese friend's farce through its conclusion. You will be so wrong, and you will wallow in despair. I appreciate that. Prosecution requests a short recess, my lord, in order to subpoena the witness and bring her here. Yes, Miss Olive Green. Indeed, my lord. One hour should be sufficient. But well, I grant the request. Excellent, I hope. The defense has made a most extraordinary ac accusation, I must say. But at the present time, I feel the prosecution's argument remains largely uncontested. Accordingly, I'm afraid that defendant and his culpability remain the sole subject of this court's attention. Thank you, counsels. We reconvene in one hour. Court is adjourned. Adjourned. I can tell. Oh yeah, the hospital would not have poison on hand. Yeah, because they would have medicines, but like, poison? I don't think so. Is that why she got stabbed? Because she was poisoning people? No, the stabbing was totally accidental. But she was there when she didn't live anywhere near there. 
Her old boyfriend lived there, and he died by gas poisoning. So, I think it was her. Joyful, jubilant jumping jacks! Oh, Mr. Nutsmith. I'm so pleased for you. Locum student Mr. Naruhoda Esquire, and non-locum judicial assistant Miss Mikotoba Esquiress. Now, finally, at long last, there can be proof. Proof that I'm innocent, and proof that my tea is innocent. What the freak? Ah, oh, good morning, my dear fellows. Ah, here's Hark Sholmes. May your drink, may you drink my tepid tea and fall forever silent. I thought the tea was innocent. Uh, ladies and germs. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you came. How wonderful. Please, save your derision. I know what you're all thinking. Thank you, Dad. Good morning, he says, when it's very nearly time for luncheon. The scorn is written clearly across your faces. Nobody said or thought anything of the sort. The truth is, I was determined that today would be the day. My sleep seduced me last night. I thought, tomorrow for once, I shall not oversleep. I'll rise early and be present in court to support my companions. Such spirited determination has a beauty all of its own, does it not? Oh, yes. He's dabbing. <laughs> And then I began to muse on the subject. Why do people oversleep? I queried. Why, time after time, do they make the same foolish blunder? And the answer came to me at once. It's so delightfully simple. People oversleep. Because they sleep. Well, is that not an astute insight into the matter? Oh, yes. Upon which realization, I attempted an experiment. I didn't sleep a wink all night. And the results... By first light, I was exhausted and began to be assailed by fits of drowsiness. Shocking. And so, the conclusion of last night's experiment is this. A good night's sleep is quite simply essential. Yes, I think most of us probably knew that already. What other presuppose I prove by experimentation? That, my dear fellow, is the scientific method. Ah, oh, yes, and one more thing. Do you remember this? Ah! Yes, of course, it's the poison that Miss Green was about to drink at the hospital yesterday. Oh, you didn't manage to. It was a laborious task, as the bottle was near empty, but such inconveniences do not hinder shows. I managed to confirm that it contains strychnine. That was right. Thanks for a bit. <laughs> Perhaps, though of course such circumstantial evidence doesn't prove Miss Green's, Green's guilt. I shall leave the bottle in your care now, but licking inside the neck is not recommended. Ah, could I have a word? Ah. Normally, I'll gift you 2k this. Uh, I'll think about it after Ace Attorney. Gregson, how good of you to come! Okay, excuse me. Wait a minute, Inspector! I, um, don't wish to make a nuisance of myself. From the look on your face, I'd say it's someone else who you think is making a nuisance of himself. My dear Inspector, please, speak freely. Pretend I'm not here. Believe me, if I could do that, life would be a whole lot simpler for me. You have the results, Inspector? Of the investigation of Mr. Shamspear's room? Not yet. Shouldn't be long now, though. No, I'm here about something else. The dead convict, actually. Oh, you mean the man from this newspaper article we discovered yesterday in Mr. Shamsphere's room? How about 500 bits? No, after after Ace Attorney, I'll think about it. I think I either need to change the batteries in my mouse, or I need a mouse pad. Because, man, this is dying. A man by the name of, ah yes, Selden. I went through the archives at the yard and dug out the fellow's file. There's something in there that... Well, it caught my eye. Something caught your eye? What, Inspector? What? Copied out the relevant parts for you, so you can read it for yourselves. Thank you. Capital Offender's file has been entered into the court record. These documents. How does everyone literally think he's guilty just because he said so? Everyone is so rude. Because they secretly racist! 
Okay, investigating findings related to Selden. 18 counts of burglary, 6 counts of suspected murder. Died of natural causes whilst in prison. His final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. The estimated 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains uncovered. Uh, Manchester Strangeways Prisons announced the death of convicted murderer and burglar Selden by natural causes in earliest hours this morning. He had been suffering with the fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, the medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. How is this relevant at all? What does this say? Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Why give us this file? It's useless. Burglary, murder. Treasure she stole. I don't think there's anything we can- oh. So this is the poison we've been hearing so much about. Strykonine. There are a few remnants on the bottle of the bottle here, look. We must be tempted to try it. Of course not, as long as we don't lose this trial. No, even if we lose the trial. No, we mustn't lose the trial in the first place, Mr. Naruhodo. Make your mind up, Mrs. Satosan. Judging other is wrong, even if there's mushroom haters. I mean, I mean, come on. Mushrooms are pretty gross. <laughs> Include the details that were in the newspaper cutting we found in Mr. Shamsphere's room. Oh! That's why it's important because Shams the other clipping was in Shamsphere's room and this one is from Scotland Yard. Why would Shamsphere have a clipping in his room? I'll rearrange everything in the court record so we don't have duplicate information. Why are you giving us a copy of this important file though? Well, you're the ones who turned up the clue in the first place, aren't you? I'm just making sure things get handled in proper fashion. Oh, Scotland Yard's workings are so wonderful. Indeed, my dear fellows, and the inspector here is a shining diamond in its crown. Shining diamond and a rough, maybe. Look, I just don't want to be beholden to a lawyer, that's all. Detective ain't so bad after all. Yeah, I guess. Cash for the defense and the defendant. Court proceedings are about to resume. Make your way to the courtroom at once. Well, I shall leave you then. I'll be listening with interest from the public gallery. Not nodding off at all. Certainly not. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. Rather tired of seeing Mr. Mustache in floods of tears personally, so... Best of luck to you. Look of student Naruhero Esquire. Yes, Mr. Natsume? It's... it's time, isn't it? Yes, this is it. No more summation examinations after this, please. I already had two. Miss Olive Green and Mr. William Shamspeare. This is going to be the final battle. He was still eating those chips out of a ink smeared newspaper cone. Yeah, that's kind of gross. He still was willing to send a kid to go to prison. Oh yeah, true. With uh, Gina. I hope Gina doesn't show up. I don't like her. I won't really have saved Soseki-san until I've exposed the whole truth of everything that's been going on. But it's all coming to a head now. You can do it, Yunosuke. You have to. In the name of- oops, whatever. Before the recess, we heard a most startling accusation for the defense. Namely, that the victim of the case we heard here only a few days ago is a true perpetrator of this incident. A reckless, rash, and prejudiced charge- PREJUDICE?! You wanna talk about prejudice, sir? My gosh, charge of wrongdoing in my opinion, my lord. However... The prosecution has tried to extend every courtesy to this amateur newcomer from dubious eastern shores. He clearly has bias, so why is he always the prosecutor for my cases? Still British too. Yeah. Judgy toast? I'm not the one being judgy. He's the one being judgy. Thank you. For that backhanded consideration. 
A rather cold assessment from the Honourable British Prosecutor, I must say. So, Lord Van Zeeks, is the new witness present and ready to take the stand? Prejudice has a different definition under law. Ready and waiting in the witness's antechamber, my lord. Very well. Bailiff, bring the witnesses in. Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court, please. William Shamsby, my liege. For mine occupation, I can say only. That I be a tragic victim, to be pitied. Currently unemployed, in other words. I'm Olive Green. I'm a fledgling artist. Well, no. I'm not a fledgling, really. A hopeless failure who's too weak spirited to admit she has no talent, I suppose. Also currently unemployed, in other words. What a coterie. Coterie? Mr. Shamspear. My lord, I am thy humble servant. I'm afraid that you are no longer merely the victim in this affair. The possibility has raised, has been raised that you are in fact the assailant intent on taking the life of your fellow lodger. The part you have played in this whole business will be thoroughly scrutinized, I assure you. I would for naught else, my lord. And Miss Green. Yes? You are aware of the reason you have been summoned to this courtroom today, I presume? Yes, the officer did explain. He said I poisoned this ridiculous buffoon. And do you accept the charge, Miss Green? I don't know anything about any poisoning. And I don't know anything about this man. Come, lady. Die to live. Verily, I know not thy prickly pea pigmented personage. But well, let us proceed with the matter at hand. That being to ascertain whether or not Miss Green had any involvement in this affair. What is his connection with the old man? Uh, whose connection to which old man? It's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Why would you suspect me? Suspect me? I barely ever go to the East End anyway. And yet, you were there. It so happens I passed by that neighborhood six days ago, that's all. And on the night that this man was poisoned, I was still in the hospital, fighting for my life. Yes, having been unfortunately caught up in the incident on the street outside the Garadab household. An incident that rendered you unconscious for some three days. I was struck in the middle of my back by a knife through no fault of my own, and now I'm under suspicion. What other irrelevant things might I be suspected of? It's all very disturbing. Hmm, your energies may better be spent worrying about random knife attacks I feel in the screen. Trust me, no one wants to be in an affair with Green. That is so mean. If she had a bit more self-confidence, I feel like she'd be super cute. But I feel like she's sad and, yeah, low self-esteem. At this point in time, all that appears to connect you with Mr. Shamspear's lodging is the Briar Road incident of six days ago. That's why. We would like you to testify formally now about exactly what happens. Oh, Garrett's up? Shamspear is Garadub's lodger. He lives in Mr. Garadub's house. So does Natsume. And Olive Green had a boyfriend, a fiancé, who used to live in Natsume's room in Garadub's house. And he was killed by poison. Oh no! I mean, like, he was, like, um, gas poisoning. That's how he died. The incident six days ago, you... You mean you want me to relieve that awful accident? Yeah, the picture of the two. Um, the, that dude used to live in Garadev's house. Unfortunately, yes. Please tell the court what happened that day. And of course, we will be interested to hear from you about your movements that day too, Mr. Shamspear. It, but, but what happened six days ago has nothing to do with me being poisoned. Let us proceed then. The witnesses will present their formal testimony to the court. On the subject of the incident that took place on Briar Road the evening of 17th of February. It was six days.
days ago, at about 5pm, I was walking along the snow when I was suddenly stopped in the back. Coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the hives where the men in this case have their lodgings. I was at the tavern on the eve which thou speakest, where I had bespoke my supper. It was the first time I'd been in the area. I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. Anyway, I was admitted straight to the hospital, so I knew nothing about all this business. I think she's lying about that being the first time she was there. Yes, a second incident inside a week at what I believe to be aptly described as the haunted lodging. One can only presume this is a most unfortunate coincidence. Meanwhile, you say you are not in your room, Mr. Shamspear. It was the following morn when I did awaken that I learned of the dire events. Mary, what a commotion did the officers of the law make on the floor above mine? When sosek was arrested on suspicions of attempted murder. I suspect that there is nothing connecting these two witnesses but happenstance. It's true, it does seem as though they're unrelated at first glance. But I'm not so sure. There's something lurking in the shadows here, I feel certain of it. And this is my one and only chance to expose it. Trust me, Sue, I've been here most streams and it doesn't make any sense to me. I think I missed one hour of one stream and now I'm completely lost, so I gave up. Oh. Did you? Oh, I guess you did miss an hour because um, you came late one time. But, but yeah, I think Olive is definitely connected to this in some way. My eye won't stop twitching and it's so annoying. Please stop being stressed, huh? Counsel, you may now cross-examine these two witnesses if you wish. She did mess up when she woke. Uh, she knew that a Japanese man was accused but had not been briefed yet. Uh, man stabbed her. I think she honestly didn't know who stabbed her. Hmm. I'm just asking JT random questions hoping to catch up. <laughs> yes, my lord. Twitchy toes. I don't want to twitch. I want- I had two glorious days of non-twitching, and then stress came back. Who stabbed her again? Um, it was Mr. Garadub's wife by accident, because she was having a fight with her husband, and she asked- she was like throwing items, and some items went out the window, and um, one of them was a knife, and it just happened to stab Olive. It was the first time that, um, what if I just automatically present no, I don't think I should present. I should first press to be like, This is your fiancé, is it not? What well, little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate. There's nothing, really. It's not worth mentioning. If you remember, you mentioned it to us yesterday at the hospital. Oh. It was related to the card you were holding. Oh, okay, so it's good I pressed her, because then the card came up. Miss Green! What was that? She clearly just heard something behind her back. She saw two Japanese people and got scared though. Cause she's slightly racist! <laughs> I think you should do whatever you can. You make this game go by ASAP, uh, in my opinion, but you do what you want. She's racist. <laughs> I- I will. If I get too stuck, then I'll just- just use a walkthrough. From memory, I believe the card contained a note that read. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. What? What does that matter? It has nothing to do with Duncan! Whoa, hello. Mr. Shamspear, do you have something to share with the courts? To be or not to be? That is the question. Ah, pray forgive me. The great bard's words springeth from within me narrow thought. With nearer thought. Don't tell me. It's because you're possessed by Shakespeare's spirit, right? Hearing Miss Green's words a moment ago seemed to make you think of something. Something of relevance, perhaps. Eh? Um, well. Nay, nay, sire. It's nothing at all. Presumably you know the name, though. Mr. Duncan Ross, I mean. After all, you were both lodgers in the same house. I would it were so, but sadly, nay. Lodging be a lonely occupation, sire. My lodging fellows be rarely known to me. So you haven't heard of him, even though he passed away in the room just one floor above yours? 
Hmm, the screen. Me, my lord? Have I done something wrong? I thought you almost said Dungan Rupa. <laughs> so he isn't royalty free Shakespeare? No, he's just a sham. The card you mentioned before, containing the note, do you have it upon your person? I do, yes, but I don't need it anymore. In fact, I should throw it away, really. Before you dispose of it, the court will take it as evidence, please. The screen's card has been entered into the court order. Of course, that's what links Mr. Shamspear and Miss Green. What did the note say? What did the note say? The envelope has been ripped. Well, Mr. Green strikes me at the type to open the correspondence more neatly than that. Ah. What is it? The way the envelope is torn. I'm almost sure I've seen the exact same shape somewhere else. Yes, it's part of the envelope part we have. From Mr. Shamspear's room. Are you thinking this piece of evidence, Mr. Naruhodo? Exactly, that's it. Try to match them up. Da -da -da -da. They go together perfectly. The torn off end of the envelope clearly belongs to this card. Da -bum -bum -bum. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? It's Duncan Ross. Now, continue with your testimony, please, Miss Green. Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm cheating now. Ross. <laughs> A tavern, you say? Which one? Well, it's the Sog and Salad, where did I where I did tarry? There's a jewel in the East End. And a little unexpected, I feel. Hmm. What do you mean, Lord Van Zeeks? The Slug and Salad offers unusually fine dining, for the locality at least. Not an establishment you'd expect to be patronized by a man with not even a crumb of bread in his room. Yay, cheating! It's cool, his great-grandfather was a lawyer. Um, you talking about, uh, Phoenix Wright? Yeah, cause, uh, Ryunosuke is his ancestor. It's true, the menu lists premium crusts of bread and glasses of water, and different levels of cloudiness. I would have expected Grub's grubbery in the local vicinity, vicinity to be more appropriate for your means. Watery soup and mushy peas. Or rather, soupy water and pea like mush. All equally appetizing. I, I just wanted to try some water in a pu different pub for once. What's wrong with that? How different can water really be? Or perhaps there's a more plausible explanation. A specific reason why he had to go to that particular establishment. Agreed. <gasps> oh! Oh! That's what happened! That's why the envelope was... The, the ripped part was in his room. Someone... I think Olive sent him the letter. He opened it, left the letter in his room, went to the ta tavern. Olive went in when he was gone took the letter, poisoned the- put the poison on the gas lamp. I think that's how it happened. Digimon, Tai, the goggles, I'm disappointed. I love Tai, Tai is my favorite kid. And then after Tai is TK. What's happening again? I'm- I'm- Yeah, it's definitely Olive- I think Olive poisoned him. But, why would she poison him? I mean- Presumably she would poison him because she thought that he killed Duncan because Duncan died of gas poisoning. But yeah. The fact that on that day of all days he dined at a place he nor wouldn't normally, it does stand out. Mr. Shamspear's own actions on the day of this incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I wonder if we have some evidence that can explain those actions. Present! Mr. Shamspear. Mm. I knew she was a horrible person. Her fiancé died. He was killed because Shamspear's a douche. Yes, sire. Uh, on the day in question, is it not the case that you visited the Slug and Salad, a place you don't normally pat patronize? 
for a very particular reason. I... I don't know what you're talking about. Pray, if thou hast some purpose, speak. Very well, I will present the court with evidence. Evidence that explains why you had to be at the slug and salad that day. Namely... This. I believe this card reveals the answer. Good lord, this screen's card, you mean? That's right, my lord. It reads... I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5pm on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter, or the meeting. It's a matter of utmost- whoops, whatever. Um, Utmost importance. Mr. Shamspear, your actions on the afternoon of Miss Green's stabbing are exactly as described in this note. Ah. Personally, I find it hard to believe that's a coincidence. Don't you, Mr. Shamspear? Um, well... Excuse me, can I say something? Yes, Miss Green? That card was delivered to me. It doesn't have anything to do with this odd man, does it? Well, you'd think so, yes. But it's hard to believe it's merely... My lord, may I? May you what, Miss Green? I'd like to make something very clear about that card. Dracula's been real quiet. He's he's gonna spring up sometime, don't you worry. Wait, but that's not evidence that he went there. No, because if the envelope was found in two different places. One, one the torn off bit at the end was found in Shamspear's room. The rest of the card in the envelope was with Olive Green. Why would the envelope be in two different places? Unless they ran into each other. Dun 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 dun. Very well, then you may amend your testimony to include details about the peculiar note. This note was delivered to me at my address. It's nothing to do with the armed man next to me here. Can't I present um, the torn off end? Um... Yeah, present it. Present the torn off. <laughs> Yeah, I presented the envelope, not the torn off part, so now I'm going to do the torn off part. The day before the incident, exactly one week ago now, this note was delivered to your address. And upon carrying out the instructions in the note, you found yourself in the hospital. Yes, I did. It's terrible, everything that's happened to me. Yes, it is terrible. If it's all true, that is. What do you mean? Now it looks like you presented the torn off. <laughs> Miss Green, have a look at this, please. It's the torn off end of an envelope. Oh, is it? And it so happens that it fits together perfectly with the envelope of the note you received. Well, where did you find that? In Mr. Shamspear's room. Eh? I in my room? Mr. Shamspear, do you perhaps remember this note from somewhere? Uh, well... Your actions that afternoon followed the instructions in the note to the letter. Come to the slug and salad on Briar Road at 5pm on the 17th. And so that's exactly where you went. Let me ask you again, Mr. Shamspear. You already knew about this note, didn't you? And you, Miss Green. Oh, what did I do? As this torn off end of the envelope proves, the note was originally in Mr. Shamspear's room. So how is it that it came to be in your possession? I... I don't have the first idea. I'm just a fledgling artist after all. You're hiding something because you really poisoned him. There's only one explanation. You broke into Mr. Shamspear's room and stole it. You did what? Sorry, thou hast what? You broke, I mean, thou were in my room. Yep, he's breaking character. Wait, but Sham said to show evidence that he went there. The letter isn't proof that he went. Uh, he said it himself though. He didn't have to listen to the note, but why would, why else would he go to a totally different place? It's, it's Phoenix right logic. We, we don't question this. <laughs> 
I mean, we do question it, but it still won't make sense. What on earth do you want with me? It would seem that both witnesses need to testify again. Uh. Miss Green. Oh, here you are. Do 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 do. Whilst you have the court's sympathy, I'm sure, for the suffering you have endured in recent events. Anyone found to be giving false testimony in a court of law will be duly punished. How do we know for sure? Who knows? Phoenix right logic. Please bear that in mind. Yes, I know. Very well then, witnesses, you will give formal testimony again now. On the subject of this curious anomaly regarding the note Miss Green claims to have received. Especially if he can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Why would he go there if he can't afford it? The anomaly in the note. I do remember now, it was a week ago, a peradventure. That note was delivered on to me. Peradventure, whatever. On the day writ with therein, I did tarry a long hour at the slug and salad, yet nobody came. Thereafter, on the evening I shared the company of the Japanese fellow, I did see the note had vanished. So he's clearly saying he read the note. I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? I can point out the villain here, and as for that torn off piece of the envelope, I don't know anything about it. What? Ow, 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 ow. Do, 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 do. The animations and characters makes up for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do like the animations, I do like the art, I do like the music. Hmm, you now claim to have received this letter, do you, Mr. Shamsphere? Faith, tis so, my lord. And I would swear to have set it upon the table in my humble lodgings. Yet, tis clear to me now that since I returned from the tavern that night, I've not laid eyes upon it. Hmm, well, that being the case, young lady, it would appear that your testimony was... A lie? Is that what you think? How unfair of you to think I'm the one lying. Because you are. We're making them fight against each other. Egg salad. Egg salad! I beg your pardon? I'm just a fledgling artist, as I said, and fledgling artists don't lie. Everyone lies. That note was delivered to me at my address, besides... We all know who the liar around here is. If that's true, Miss Green, how do you explain the facts? This part of the envelope was, without question, found in Mr. Shamsby's room. I don't see why I should explain. Sorry? I'm a fleshing artist. My job here is just to say what happened. That's all. She is clearly hiding something. If it smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> She's a liar. She is a liar. Your job to give the explanations and the proofs. You, the fledging lawyer. The fledgling will do his best. Evidently, my learned friend's cross-examination is our only hope of learning the truth. Well, counsel? I'm ready, my lord. Well then, the defense will now proceed with the cross-examination of the witnesses. She's not even painting anything. Yeah, I want to see what her painting is, like, if we do get to see it in the end. The screen clearly did break into Mr. Shamsbeer's room. There can be no question of that. And that's how she acquired the note. Yes, two facts that are starting to lead me to a possible explanation for all this. And it's not a pretty one. She put the brush to her cheek and no paint smear. Oh yeah, that's true. But whenever she does the ch -ch -ch, like, there's red paint. Why would I? Poison! Yesterday at the hospital, we saw you with this bottle. Though the contents spilt during the course of our meeting, a small quantity remained. Ah! According to the defense's independent analysis, Mr. Scholm's chemistry set, the liquid that was still in the bottle was identified as strychnine. What? Strychnine? The very same poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear? 
gotta finish the last episode of 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 right yeah i gotta, gotta finish this but then there's three more cases after this we miss green you broke into this man's lodgings for one reason and one reason alone to cover the end of the pipe that feeds the gas lamp in Mr. Shamsby's room with poison. Can- can this be? You broke into my room, too. It may seem incredible to the court, but from the remaining clues, there is only one logical conclusion that we can reach. Did I mention that Omari is a turn-based RPG? No, you did not. The person who attempted to take Mr. Shamsbury's life with poison was you, Miss Olive Green. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! I meant I got to finish. Oh! Do it! Do it! Finish me this right. And you play a small, cute children. Nice! Order! Counsel, are you seriously suggesting this woman put poison on the end of gas pipe with the intent to kill? Yes, my lord. There's no other way to explain the facts. But if a scream did indeed set this odious trap six days ago, and the victim had put his mouth to the pipe that very evening as suspected, the attempted murder would have happened six days ago, surely. Ah, um, well, that's a very good point. But Natsume was in jail, and that's why he didn't do it. The police were there. Perhaps not, my lord. I beg your pardon? There was a significant police presence in the area that evening on account of the incident on Briar Road. Uh, you make all sorts of friends like a pet rock and you fight God. So it's like, uh, Earthbound, huh? Local residents were being interviewed throughout the night as part of the ongoing inquiry. A circumspect criminal would likely have chosen not to carry out any wrongdoing at the time. Lord Van Zeeks? And of course, the following morning, there was more activity at Mr. Shamspear's address. More activity? Ah, yes. You mean his fellow lodger, Mr. Natsume, being arrested on suspicion of murder? That's right. And as the defense has already proposed, Mr. Shamspear was meddling with the gas in the pipe for a very sinister reason himself. To cause the gas stove in Mr. Natsume's room to go out, thereby asphyxiating the occupant. Wait, sorry, that last one is Persona. I mean, the last one is a lot of RPGs. But once Mr. Nasme had been arrested, his room was under constant surveillance by the police. In the circumstances, Mr. Shamsbury had no reason to blow air into the gas pipe. I didn't mention it, yeah, it's very earthbound. <laughs> the intended victim being in a prison cell. With the need to tamper with the gas removed, the poison on the pipe lay dormant. And then, three days ago now, the situation changed again. Right, Mr. Natsume's trial, which took place here at the Old Bailey, came to an end. The trial in which the man stood accused of stabbing the screen at the back, but was duly acquitted. That resulted in Mr. Natsume returning to his lodgings for the first time in two days. And that very night, his gas stove mysteriously went out, and Mr. Shamsbury was mysteriously poisoned. Uh, mm. In conclusion, the poison that was present on the mouth of the gas pipe had been put there in the victim's room some four days earlier. Mari! Yeah, her canvas is blank. Wow. With that new understanding, it becomes clear that this letter was all part of the plan. What plan? The court will recall that the note gave instructions to visit the slug and salad at 5 o'clock and that the recipient should tell nobody else. The reason for those instructions are now clear. To ensure that the lodger would not be at home at the stated time. To make sure I was at home? Exactly. While you were out, Miss Green could safely slip into your room, knowing that she wouldn't be disturbed. You... you mean to say, that letter... was written by Miss Green, yes. And in order to cover her tracks, she took it away with her when she left. Just after she smeared poison over the mouth of the gas pipe in your room. Everyone here is a scumbag. To the gallows with all of them. <laughs> Alda, what do you have to say for yourself, witness? Just 
Who are you? Why did you try to kill me? Miss Green's motive. Should be obvious. Wow. It's all tied up with someone whose name we've heard several times already during the course of this trial. So that's what's behind all this. The trial actually finally got interesting, for real! You will share your apparent understanding with the court, please, counsel. Which person is behind this woman's motive for the attack on the victim's life? Um... I have to do, uh, Duncan, right? There's a, a there's an achievement for presenting someone at some time, but I think I'll just do that on my own time. I don't want to risk deductions. Duncan Ross. That's right. Before the defendant, Mr. Natsuma took up residence in the lodgings at Mr. Garadub's. Somebody else was renting the room. Mr. Duncan Ross. I knew I'd heard the name somewhere else. It was all over the papers a month ago, when the man died in strange circumstances at the haunted lodging. Hmm, that does ring a vague. Ah, oh, of course, yes, I remember now. The young man they claimed was strangled by the convict's curse or some such. Sadly, my lord, it wasn't a curse of any kind, nor was it an accident. The man died as a result of Mr. Shansbury blowing into the gas pipe and causing gas to leak into the room. It's like six hours of effing around and 20 minutes of something interesting for real. This is why I wanted to finish this trial today, because I was like, I need to get to the bottom of this. It was murder, plain and simple. Ah. <laughs> well, what do you know? The world is so unfair. Curses, curious deaths, that's all people care about. If it's an interesting story, they want to know. It doesn't cross their minds that real people are involved. Once they're bored, just one month later, once the story has lost its appeal, everyone's forgotten him. You... you mean you? Duncan was... Mr. Ross was Miss Green's fiancé. Get the achievement? Okay. At some lifetimes. Oh wait, haha. <laughs> fiancé? You may not have known until now who Miss Green really is, Miss Shamspear, Mr. Shamspear. But she's known exactly who you are all along. Because you're her sworn enemy. The murderer who took the life of the man she was to marry. Marry! Miss Green, is it not the case that in order to exact revenge on Mr. Shamspear, you smeared poison over the end of the gas pipe? She's attempting murder for revenge. Mm-hmm. I mean, her fiancé died, why shouldn't he die? In her mind. This... this is all quite extraordinary. Am I correct in my understanding that you now accuse both parties, counsel? Each on different counts of murder? Yes, my lord. That's correct. <laughs> Inhaling so deeply, it appears that my fledgling learned friend has taken in a lungful of dubious gas that's causing his judgment to be clouded. What? What? <laughs> Why would Mr. Shamspear have wanted to kill these lodgers, as you say? You have completely failed to provide the motive to substantiate your accusation against the man. Yes, yes, that's right, Mr. Reaper, my liege. I... I have been slighted. It is lies, all lies. I deny every utterance. You'll have to forgive me, Mr. Nadahoda, sir. But I don't intend to admit to anything either. Miss Green. I'm sure you'll think I'm being very rude, but... I'm not going to be sent to the gallows for the likes of this scoundrel. Why would the defendant poison Shanspear? <laughs> But you broke into the man's room. You didn't do it to smear poison on the pipe. What was your reason? I thought I'd have a look around, that's all. Sorry? You're right, I suspected him. So I thought perhaps I might find some evidence or something in his room. Evidence that it was him who took Duncan's life. Shut up, Dracula, for real. Oh, vileness! Oh, villainy! Oh, tyranny! Oh, rotundity of woman! But in any case, 
Whenever I leave my room, I do turn the key in the lock. The whole place is falling apart. The locks on the doors are no different. Duncan showed me once how to unlock the door with some turps and a piece of wire. Oh, awfulness! Oh, artfulness! Oh, artfulness! Oh, tyranny! Oh, profanity of woman! We will consider your trespassing on some future occasion, but for now. Tell the court what you found, what evidence your search revealed. Well, I spotted a note that I'd sent him lying on the floor. When I went to pick it up, I noticed something. One of the floorboards was loose, and underneath it, I discovered a secret hiding place. Eh? Yes, we also discovered that hiding place. Inside, we found a newspaper cutting, a photograph, and an empty tin box. Ah, yes. Well, the thing is, when I found it, the box wasn't empty. What? There was something in it? Yes. A key. This rather nice key. Ah! Annoyingly, Van figured it out, but he still tries to crush you. Because he hates me and he's racist. Profanity? More profanity. Oh my gosh, that's so mean, Regal. What are you doing with that? What the? Every ounce of color has drained from his face. Give it here! Give it to me now! It's mine! I inherited it! What was that, witness? What did you say? You inherited it. Ah! Uh, um, no, I... Ugh. What's all this about? He inherited that key. It was obviously important to you, since you'd gone to such lengths to hide it. So I took it. I don't know what it's for, but you took something precious from me, so I took something precious from you. So what if it means you can't open something now? I don't care. Give it back this minute! Give it to me! Calm yourself, witness. Mr. Shamsbury has tried, and in one case succeeded, to take the life of two lodgers now. Yes, his motive for doing so is the key to everything that's happened. It's true that there appears to be no motive to support the accusation against Mr. Shamsbury at first, but considering everything we now know, I think there is actually something that could explain it. What? I need to recall every piece of evidence at our disposal, everything we've seen and heard. Because I'm sure that I just caught a glimpse of the link that runs through all of these events. In that case, counsel, I must demand that you present evidence to the court in support of your claim. What is it that you can say can explain the motivation for Mr. Shamsbury's alleged crimes? Isn't it the... the file? Right? Because... because what else is left? We did everything else. It's gotta be the file. Nothing else that's left. That's the only time she'll ever hear give it to me in her life. Oh my god, Regal, you... Oh my gosh, those are so harsh. That's an official police report, is it not? The Selden file. How did you get hold of that? Is it Selden? The now sadly deceased Mr. Ross and the defendant Mr. Natsume have only one thing linking them. The fact that they have lodgings in the same room. Well, yes, we know this, certainly. A room that was formerly occupied by Selden. Until, that is, he was arrested by Scotland Yard for his involvement in multiple burglaries. Hmm, I see. She was engaged. Exactly, she was engaged, dude. Someone loved her, Regal. Don't be mean. And it so happens that the convict Selden left behind one very substantial mystery when he died. There's some 1,000 pounds worth of loot that he stole. Which as yet remains to be found. Ah, oh, yes, of course. It's coming back to me now. It's written in his file here. A thousand pounds lost en route to hell. That was how the paper summed it up. And it seems that one particular fellow inmate was with the convict in his final moments. It's not hard to imagine Selden entrusting that inmate with his most closely guarded secret. The location of the stolen loot. And perhaps a key to unlock whatever container the valuables were in. <gasps> Shamspear was the inmate roommate. Oh my gosh. And now he's dead. So what does that tell you? That someone still loved her, Regal. Ah, oh, you mean 
this case? Mr. Shamsweer, it was you, wasn't it? You were at the cap you were at the Capital Offender side when he died, were you not? What are you talking about? It's a false charge, I tell you. A false charge. The name of the inmate who was with Selden at his death is noted in this file. The simple telegram to the prison where he died would quickly tell us how false the charge really is. Ugh. But but even if it's true. Why would the man be so intent on killing every subsequent occupant of convict's lodgings? There's only one explanation for that, my lord. It was in that very room that Selden hid his loot. Oh, it all comes out. Yes, and having established that, all of Mr. Shakespeare's subsequent actions start to make perfect sense. When he was let out of prison following Selden's death, he made immediately for Mr. Garadab's lodgings in the hope of renting Selden's old room. However, the retired army man was unable to offer him the accommodation of his choice. How do you know that? Because Selden's old room had already been let to somebody else, Mr. Duncan Ross. Huh. Which is why Mr. Shamsbeer subsequently devised his gas-based plot to kill the occupant of the room. And when it was successful, he presumably intended to inquire about switching into the newly vacant room. However, a certain jittery someone had beaten him to it. Mr. Sosaki Natsume, the defendant of this case, no less. So you decided to use the ploy with the gas again, didn't you, Mr. Shamsbeer? This time to oust Mr. Natsume. All for one simple and av avaricious reason. To get your hands on the thousand pounds of loot left behind by the dead convict. Uh, you... Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. My throat hurts. Why didn't he just sneak into the effing room? Because he's stupid! He could've befriended who lived there and be like, Yo, let me up into your room, and then, you know... But he's an idiot! Oh! Oh, I've been missing dialogue. Whoops, listen, I want you to me loot everything to stop the coppers getting them bits on it. It's in, in your room where I was lodging when they got me. Yeah, this is the key to it. Take it. Always stay one step ahead, mate. See you in hell, I guess. Damn spear. When two people look past flaws and looks love can form mm -hmm. mine what did looks like i'm gonna snuff it before they get to stretch me neck okay what did he just say mine that loot is mine oh my word mr shamspear it's all lies. I don't accept any of it. Why should I? After all, you don't have a shred of evidence. You can't prove I killed that fellow. Forsooth, I'm the victim here, remember? Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? If I don't admit to it, there's nothing you can do. You can't arrest me. For a time being, anyway. Verily. You can't arrest a victim, can you? Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? I'm so close. I just need a few more hours. I swore to myself that I'd get my hands on it. And I can almost taste it now. Do you really think I'd just give up? There's no question in my mind now. This man is guilty through and through. Did she just poison him just now? No, he just went crazy. He went psycho. He seems so utterly intoxicated by the idea of that loot. I'm afraid that however hard you press him, he'll never admit to what he's done, Mr. Nandohodo. There is a way. Pardon? There's one way I can finish him. No. He's already committed the most heinous crimes to get his hands on that loot. Which means all we need to do is find it first. A fine plan. Were it not for the fact that the police thoroughly searched the room following the death of Mr. Ross. If it's there at all, it must be very well hidden indeed. Hmm. 
Without conclusive evidence, I certainly cannot rule. If only... If only there was some way we could find the convict's loot quickly. The fingerprints! Sholmes' fingerprint thing! This is the final piece of the complex puzzle. But I think we might have it in our possession already. Huh? Have what? Or rather, I think we may well have something that can help us find where that loot is hidden. My lord. Yes, counsel? The defense would like to make a proposal about how to find the late convict's hidden loot. I believe we are already in possession of something that could give us a clue as to its whereabouts. It's our last chance, so it has to be worth a gamble. Besides, we've used the same technique once already, and it definitely paid off then. But well, counsel, let the court hear your idea. What do you propose we can use in order to locate the hiding place of the deceased convict's hall? Uh, uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> Spray it. <laughs> Get the achievement. Not yet. If I'm not mistaken, those are Mr. Shakespeare's handprints on the wall of his lodgings. That's right, my lord. Exposed as a result of the defense's independent investigation of the scene. It is not a wonderful new discovery in the field of forensic science that the great detective Mr. Sholmes- Stop reiterating that. Stop it. Stop simping for him. Stop it. <laughs> the great detective? Is that some kind of joke? Do you really think I'm going to be daunted by a man with such a ridiculous title? As opposed to your- oh my- stop! This game is so scary! Wow, they upped it on the horror scare factor. Dang. I should think the great bald ought to recognize such a title when he hears when he hears one, Mr. Shan. Oh wait, what? Who's talking? I uh... oh Holmes. Perhaps we should compete for the honor of most ridiculous title. Ah, it's Sherlock Holmes himself. What are you doing here, great detective? Your usual haunts are the filthy back streets of the capital, are they not? You belong in the garbage, man. Ah, oh, Mr. Reaper, it's been too long. Let's see your complexion has worsened since last we met. Mr. Sholmes? He does low Lord Van Zeekstan. Well enough to say something like that in any case. Mr. Sholmes, though you may be heralded as a great detective by the population at large, that does not give you the right to come and go in my courtroom as you see fit. If I may, my lord. Mr. Sholmes' newly developed scientific method has helped us to uncover vital clues to this case already. Clues, you say? I call them skin prints, my lord. My method identifies every location touched by an individual under scrutiny. It's the method by which we were able to ascertain this gentleman's gas pipe activities. Ah! You need only a small sample of something the individual has previously touched to make an indicated solution. In your case, sir, I used a teacup you had been holding. Elementary. So now, Mr. Nadhodo. Ah, yes. What am I to use as a sample to make the indicator solution this time? Thank you for offering to help, Mr. Sholmes. When the convict was arrested, he was living in what is now Sosuke-san's room. We need a sample to help locate Selvin's loot that's hidden in his old room. What form will the sample take? Uh, okay, present the person, and then to get the achievement, I have to present anyone but Olive. Oh, my throat hurts. We will need something of Selden's in order to create the indicator solution to find his loot. And something the convict owned happens to be in the possession of somebody listed in the court record. Upon my word, Mr. Nadhuru, your powers of reasoning appear to be on, on the up. So, which particular person do you have in mind? From whom can we attain a possession of the late convict Selden to create the indicated solution? For now, I'm just gonna say Shamspear and give me the achievement. And what, pray, does said person possess that could be applicable to her purpose? Let's hear your new and improved powers of reasoning at work, my dear fellow. Dear me, your left eye just twitched. Are you currently co concocting an elaborate excuse? Ah, my eye stops twitching. Wee! Not some clever Japanese joke about a wet noodle, I hope. Ah, you got me. Yay, the noodler. 
I think we need to reconsider this from the start, Mr. Naruhodo. Why do I feel as though susato san is studying in my left eye now? I'm ready and waiting, there's no rest is in your hands. From whom can we Olive? <laughs> Miss Green. Ah, oh, me? What do you want with me? The key around your neck, if you please. Sorry. That key belonged to Selden. There will be remnants of secretions from the man's skin on its surface that we can use. Very true. That is the sample we need. Using it, we can create the indicator solution required for Mr. Sholm's skin print seeker. And find out exactly what Selden touched in the room that he used to rinse. Ah, Mr. Shamspear, as one great to another, I assure you. If the late convict's hall is hidden somewhere in his former lodgings, I shall uncover it in no more than 30 minutes. Ugh. So, Mr. Shamspear, the truth is well within our grasp now, and as such, you will never get your hands on Selden's stolen wealth. Ugh. 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 In that case, I'll gladly let Mr. Sholmes have this key. No! Give the key to me! The detective shan't have it! It's over, Mr. Shamspear. No! No! You're out of options now. There's only one thing left for you to do. Admit your guilt. Oh. Oh, Shample Spear! Despair! Be thy name! Did he just get shot in the crotch? Why did confetti come out of it? Or who was shooting him? What the heck? What was this? Oh, his necklace exploded. Never intended to kill the man. I just... I just wanted to drive him out of the room. That's all. So you'd have time to find a convict's hall of stolen goods. Yet after you'd killed the young man, you still didn't move into the room. I asked the landlord, of course. I pleaded with him, but he refused. Why? I was three months behind with the rents, for one thing. Mr. Garda really has had a lot to put up with. Didn't you know? I... know what? And he had the gas repair work done immediately afterwards, putting the room out of action for a while. And then, the Japanese man swooped in at just the right moment to sign the new lease. Poor Mr. Natsume, what unfortunate timing. Then, five days ago, after the incident on Briar Road when the Japanese fellow got himself arrested, I thought I'd finally had my chance, but it wasn't to be. No, the scene was sealed off and guarded by the police night and day. And, if I remember rightly, Mr. Sholm spent the whole day in there reading books. Couldn't even enter the room, let alone search for the loot. Which is why, on the day Mr. Natsume was acquitted and returned to his room, you once again tried your trick of blowing air into the gas pipe that feeds the stove in his room. Unbeknownst to you, however, that action would lead you into a deadly trap. When a guy shoots his load, a bunch of confetti comes out. <laughs> wow, that news to me! William Shamspear. How does it go? To be or not to be? That is the question. From Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. Well, let me tell you, in your case, it's not to be. That is the answer. You deserve to die for what you've done. Uh, uh. So, Olive is also guilty. They are both guilty. One of murder, and attempted murder, and lying, and one of attempted murder. At first, I really did think it was just a terrible accident. Never forget our conversation the night before Duncan died. 
The gas supply in my new lodgings are a complete disaster, you know, Olive. The gas supply? Yes, the stove always seems to go out in the middle of the night for some reason. That's no joke. They say it's the convict's curse. No, oh, Duncan, please, don't stay there. I don't care how cheap it is. Alright then, it's that important to you. I'm not looking for a new place. And there are spare rooms in my house. Why don't you leave the whole room for tonight? No, I'd better not. We said we'd wait until we graduated before we told our parents, remember? But that was the last time we ever spoke. That very night, he fell victim to the gas. No, I need to f read all this, Regal. If only I'd known it was to happen, I'd have insisted he left that horrible room that instant. But instead, all I'd been left with is bitter regrets. I stopped going to school. But something kept drawing me back to the house on Briar Road. I saw a stooped eastern looking man with a moustache coming out of the house one day when I was there. He walked up the road to grab scrubbery for some food, so I followed him. I sat myself down next to him. He had some watery looking soup and started to pick a quarrel with the publican. The place is cursed, I tell you, cursed! The ghost that convict who used to live there is trying to suffocate me. I wake up in the middle of the night, freezing to death because the stove has gone out. The room is full of gas and I can hardly breathe. But the pipes have been checked, no problem there. It's like, I'm the problem, that's what they're thinking. But how could that be? Duncan was gone and... Now this man had almost suffered the same fate. Could it really be a curse? Welcome back, Smooth. My throat hurts a lot. Then I remembered. A rumor I'd heard about how the gas companies go around investigating the gas installations. A rumor? Oh, you mean... Yes. Everybody's heard the stories, it seems, about how they go around checking the pipes. Oh, anything connected to the gas can be extinguished by blowing air into the pipework. That's when it started. A little flicker of doubt in the back of my mind. It just wouldn't go away. Was it really an accident, though? Once I'd had the idea, it wouldn't leave me alone. It plagued me day and night. So I bought this at one of the black markets in the East End. A black market? I've never been. I just heard people talk about them. And you really can buy anything you can think of there. In some ways, being able to get my hands on this so easily made me more determined. That... Duck, no, late night screamo, huh? What? What? <laughs> What's that? I had to find out one way or another. Was Duncan's death an accident? Or was it murder? And your chosen method for establishing the truth was simple, but highly effective. Smear poison on the gas pipe you suspected the man of tampering with, and wait. If Mr. Shamsbury was innocent, nothing would come of what you'd done. But if he was guilty, he would pay for his crimes dearly. I found the name of the man I suspected, William Shamspear. And then I wrote him this little note. With information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the slug and salad on Briar Road at 5pm on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about the letter or the meeting. A matter of utmost importance. If he'd done it, I knew that would worry him enough, so he'd be sure to go. I waited to see if it worked. And of course, Mr. Shamspear followed the instructions to the letter. I worked out where the gas pipe was straight away. So I smeared a good amount of poison I'd bought all around the mouth of the pipe. All the time praying that the devil's work wouldn't be done and that it was all just some wild fantasy. Actually, no. All the time praying that the devil's work would be done. And that the culprit would get his just desserts. Just deserts, I mean. <laughs> because dessert is spelled with two S's. So she admitted to attempted murder. No screamo music for you, huh? Sadness all around here. Re 
three days ago, when you were first stood in the dock before me, this whole affair seemed relatively straightforward. Yes, my lord. I certainly never imagined the depths of depravity that we should subsequently find lurking behind the scenes. It has been a long road, my Nipponese friend. I'm not your friend. Shut your face. Oh, yes. And one I certainly didn't envisage walking with you. Get out of my life, please. Rico, it's up to you. Nevertheless, together we have reached the light at the end of the tunnel, as it were. Miss Green. Yes, my lord. You will henceforth be stripped of your freedom as punishment for the attempted murder of Mr. William Shamspear. Yes, I know. And you, Mr. Shamspear. You will be tried. Oh, whoops. You will be tried for the murder of Mr. Duncan Ross in cold blood and the subsequent attempted murder of Mr. Sosaki Natsume here present. Mm. Um, Mr. Nadahodo. Uh, yes? Yesterday, at the hospital, when you and your friends stopped me from... from ending your life by drinking what was left in the poison bottle? I... I wasn't myself. I can't even really remember what was going through my mind. To be or not to be, I suppose. That's a question that's so hard to answer, it seems. Sorry, I was falling asleep and I heard Regal. <laughs> you gotta provide the screamo music. Well, personally, I'm glad of your being here, Miss Green. Oh. And I'd like to believe... And it's a blessing Mr. Shanspear didn't die when he ingested the poison. For your sake, at the very least. Because of you, I chose life, not death. And now, you've made the truth come out at last. Really, I can't thank you enough. Oh, Miss Green. Mr. Sosaki Natsume. Yes, my lord. The court declares that you are exonerated from all blame in this matter. Accordingly, I would call upon the ladies and gentlemen of the jury to present a verdict of not guilty. Uh, duh. Everyone admitted to their guilt. We are in full agreement, my lord. In that case, I hereby declare the defendant. Not guilty. Give me the fireworks. Come on, do it. Okay. This company. No, yeah, fireworks. Yeah, give me the fireworks. What is adjourned? Wait, I thought we were gonna look for the treasure though. Are we not? Oh, yes, yes, at last. Divine justice duly done. Ah, uh, thank you so much, Regal, for the bits, for the cheers. Divine justice. My dear fellow, if there were any divine justice in the world, you would shave that mustache. No, this has nothing to do with my mustache. Some say that a luxuriant mustache. Is a sign of physical prowess, Mr. Sholmes. Look up, student, Mr. Nadahoro Esquire. Once again. Once again. You saved me from doom. I'm very happy to have been able to help, Mr. Natsume. Congratulations on your acquittal. You're second in almost as many days. I was first acquainted with and gained affection for English literature whilst in our great homeland empire. Then... By a twist of fate, I was brought to the land that bore the fruit that, of that literature. Only, the city of bricks and mortar became my prison. Try as I might, I never found my feet here. In the end, I confined myself to my room and lived life through friendly old books. Just go back to Japan, dude. You've had such a difficult time, haven't you? Ah, oh, but a week ago now, 
I dragged you out of that dark and dingy room of yours, did I not? You did, you did, and I've seen more of life in this week than in all of my years to date. No wait, Trollms has a point. That mustache is a crime. When he's right, he's right. I think the mustache is cute. And so for the first time. I feel I've begun to see the true face of the English that's so far been hiding from me in the wall of fog. My dear fellow, there's nothing special about the true face of the English, as you put it. Wheresoever one goes in the world, humans are human. There are few genuine differences. Yes, I think you're right. I finally started to see that, and I've come to understand something. It worked out why I was attracted to English literature in the first place. It made me see that whatever our nationality, we humans all have the same hopes and fears. We're all just doing our best to live. Well said. I've come to feel the same way. I've made a decision too. I'm going to cut short my study tour here and return to Japan. Is he going to snap his neck? What? Just when we become friends here in England. What a terrible shame. Oh, I know. That does tug at my heartstrings. It really does. But I've decided I'd like to take everything I've learned here in Britain and write something on my own. Uh, novel of sorts, I suppose. Oh my! So you'll be creating your own literature, Mr. Natsume. How wonderful! Oh, well, no, I mean, I wouldn't presume to call it literature. If you wrote something, it's literature. Why not? When that is precisely the definition, Mr. Mustache. Exactly. I suppose you're right, yes. It will, in a way, be literature. But as of now, all I know is that I'd like to try my hand at writing. I have no delusions of grandeur. Delusions of grandeur. I, for one, would love to read your work. Well, all things considered, it may be for the best. After all, you have once again emerged victorious. From a battle with the Reaper. Ah, that's very true. There is no salvation for a person in the dock when the Reaper is in the prosecutor. The desire to return post haste to the perceived safety of your homeland is what I quite understand. My goodness, yes! Faced with such a terrifying prospect. Nobody would consider that cowardly, I'm sure. But, but that's. That's not why I'm leaving! I mean it! Objection! What the. And that was the case that we found ourselves embroiled in six months ago now. So, why did Susato have to go home after this? It doesn't make sense. It reminds me of when I wrote a half a short story. I can't write. I hate writing. It takes too much brain power and effort. This will be the last time we will ever see him. Mm, I hope so. It was a few pages. It, it's hard for me to even write a page. It, oh, I don't like writing. Soseki-san did indeed return to Japan and submitted a report about both cases to the government. It was on reading that report that Professor Mikotoba was pr prompted to visit the scholar. And barely any time later, Susato-san was given the news that she must return to Japan as well. On the back of a telegram stating falsely that her father had fallen gravely ill. The only possible explanation that comes to mind is what happened after the trial on the following day. The day that we uncovered the loot hidden by the now-deceased convict in his former lodgings. What is it? I had an idea in my head I had to get out. I mean, people who write are amazing. Like, props to anyone who does any sort of writing. Poetry, short stories, novels, fan fiction, just amazing. Watch, he's going to stand as a witness against you. No, don't say that. He's gone. Oh, well done, Mr. Sholmes. How simply marvelous of you. You uncovered a secret hiding place in just one day. Wasn't it supposed to take 30 minutes? As I believe I told you, my dear fellows, skin prints are extremely useful in such situations. Wouldn't you agree, Gregson? Why is he here? Gregson's been happily munching in agreement this whole time, you know, Hurley. Happily? I think perhaps humorlessly might be closer to the truth. So, it transpires the man fashioned a hiding place in the ceiling. And what's in it? What exactly is the loot? Game script counts, right? Uh, I don't know. Yes, it does. Any kind of writing. Hard. 
I should link it to you to get some feedback. He has to return the money. Ah. Let us look then, if you're ready. Let us examine the late burglar's hole. What the? What is that? It has blood on it! It looks to be some sort of neckband or collar. A collar? It's huge, though. Look at all the gemstones set in it. I can see why it was claimed to be worth a thousand pounds. Perhaps it, perhaps I could have it as belts. Oh, have you noticed on the inside there? There are some dark stains of blood. You... you don't think... It could be blood, do you? I mean, there's quite a lot of it. On second thoughts, perhaps I won't have it as a belt. And then of course, there's this emblem here. A large letter B and a small crown. What does it signify, do you think? Oh, I, I hadn't noticed that. Hmm... I feel as though I've seen that emblem somewhere before, you know? Where could it have been? That's enough of that, I think. Why is he so serious? What? What's the matter with Mr. Sholmes? All the color has drained from his face. Well, Inspector, I believe you ought to be taking this, oughtn't you? It could be valuable evidence, after all. It must be kept, kept safely under lock and key. Ah, yes. Get your grubby hands off that, you lot, and hand it over, now! What is it? The bloody jewels. This stale donut and some expired Subway coupons. Subway is gross and garbage, and no one should be eating Subway. I've never seen a collar that large before. And all those jewels certainly look to be extremely valuable. But that's not what stood out the most to me, at least not once I noticed it. Those dark marks on the inside of the collar. Those stains. Could they really have been blood? Well, that was a funny case, wasn't it? But it's all buttoned up now. And you look very pleased, Iris. I am, because I was starting to wonder what I, I could use as the basis of this month's story in the magazine. But this case would be perfect. It's been so fascinating. You're talking about the latest installment of the Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I presume. The mystery of the knife in the mist, and the mustached man and the convict's curse, perhaps. I can make it a two-part story. Oh, I can't wait. Um, a word, please, Iris. Yes? What is it, Hurley? I'm sorry, but you can't write about this case. It's out of the question. Why? What? Why not? It's a great case! And now I shall have to insist that you limit yourself to the first of your two titles. The second must never be written. Is that clear? Yes. Huh? Of course, the first why? There was nothing... There was nothing weird about the case! Why?なぜあの時、ホームズさんが事件の発表を禁じたのか。全てが一つにつながるにはもう少し時間が必要だった。物語が再び動き出したのは佐藤さんの手紙が届いて2ヶ月後。その事件はかのロンドンバンパクの最中に起こったのだった。Oh, so now we're at the Great Exhibition. I hope we entertain you as much as you have entertained us. Good job and good night. Thanks so much, Smooth, for sticking around for so long. Oh my gosh, it's been almost three hours. Holy crap, thank you for sticking around so late. I just really wanted to finish this trial. I just kept going. I was resting my eyes, what do you say? Um, That he didn't realize why Sholmes wouldn't let Iris write about the case until later. 
It would be two months after Susato le Suta Susato's letter arrives that we would um, start learning about what the deal is. The return of the great departed soul. Oh! Whoa, whoa, look. Look at these um silhouettes of the save files. Like, it's Ryunosuke, but this one is Sholmes. So, is the next one gonna be Sholmes? Related? Or like, Sholmes centered? Whoa. What's the deal with the bloody collar? Why was that worth a thousand pounds? That's so weird. Anyways, it's um super late. My throat hurts a lot. It's been almost three hours of streaming, so I really need to go sleep now. Omni is like, no, gotta finish Great A's Attorney. It's been like two years, man. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty, have a good night, and yeah, have a good weekend, guys. Bye!